Shalom, everyone. This is Rabbi Brian. Uh, today at the service, we had a little bit of an audio failure. The first two minutes and 45 seconds of the sermon was not recorded. The audio was not recorded. So here I am after service to just tell you what I was talking about, and we'll resume live once the audio kicks in. Um, so today we honored uh, the death of a loved one, and we recited as a congregation the Mourner's Kaddish, the Jewish prayer for mourning. And I was sharing that for me, and even for Susie, death is very, very hard. And I feel like a bad pastor or a bad rabbi when I say that, that I feel the sting of death. Even though scripture says, oh, death, where is your sting? Because when you believe in Yeshua, and I believe this with perfect faith, that the one that dies is, is, with, is with Yeshua, is in heaven, has eternal life. Death, where is your sting? I'll tell you where that sting is. It's in my heart when I experience a loss. And again, I feel like a bad rabbi sometimes because we should be, I think people think we should be celebratory when people die, especially when believers die because they're in heaven. But death is hard. And maybe you need to hear this. Maybe you need to hear that it's okay to grieve. Sometimes we as believers, we do a disservice to the, uh, to the need and we underestimate the need to grieve. And maybe you need to hear that it's okay to grieve. And not just the loss of a person or the death of a person, maybe the death of a marriage or maybe the death of a dream. You know, loss is hard and we all experience it and we need to honor that. We need to um, experience it. We can't just shove it under the rug. Uh, death is very hard for me and, and for Sue. We really feel the sting of it. And I want you to know that it's if you do, it's okay. And don't let anybody put a time limit on your grief. You know, you could take as long as you need. Uh, sometimes people lose a spouse, let's say, and they grieve for a bit, and maybe they get married after a few months, or sometimes they get married after 10 years, or sometimes not at all. And all of that is okay, and all of that is holy, and all of that's between you and the Lord. And don't let anybody just tell you that you should just get over it. Grief is real. Hurt is hard. And sometimes we need to take our time for this. We do need to take our time for this. Only the Holy Spirit knows when it's time to stop grieving and to move on. So at this point, we will resume the live service with the live audio. Shalom. Time limit on these things. But you know what it says in scripture though, and this is where like, I need to be careful as a rabbi because I would never tell somebody just, you know, if somebody's grieving or somebody's hurting, I would never say just get over it. I would never say just get over it. And you know, some people, the same people sometimes that stood with you in your grief and said, can I pray for you? And what can I do for you? And what can I get for you? If, they, if you don't heal on their timeline, the same people all of a sudden be like, why aren't they getting over it? Why aren't they getting over it? Like, isn't it been enough? Isn't it time for these people to move on? Don't let any human tell you how long you need to take. If you need to grieve. What does it say about the scripture? And you know, you know, one thing I really, I struggle with when I extemporize, I mean, I know the word extemporize, when I kind of just roll with it without plan, is I'm really good at quoting scripture. I'm not good at quoting scripture exactly. And I think that does you a disservice. You know, so, so preachers that come when, you know, with notes and things like that, where they actually have the, the, the scripture and the verse and the chapter right in front of them, I, I commend them. It's great. I don't recommend what I do. That's why I like the PowerPoint when I have it. I don't have it today that I can actually put a scripture verse without paraphrasing. So for those who dislike the paraphrasing of God's word, I apologize. But it's Hebrews something something, I think it's Hebrews 4, when it talks about the word being alive and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. And it cuts between joint and marrow and soul and spirit and discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hey, I think I got that one right. Glory. Glory. Can I get a Glory. Can I get a glory? Because the Spirit of God knows when it's time to mourn and it's time to shake off the dust and arise. Humans don't, but God does. So what I would say as a rabbi, give yourself all the time you need to grieve. But when the
the Spirit of the Lord is saying, move on. Don't waste any time in getting up. And that's what I would say. But give yourself the time. We know the story of King David when he lost his first son because he sinned with Bathsheba. And then this, his firstborn baby, his son, died. What a tragedy that was. And we see King David prostrate on the ground for seven days. He wouldn't eat. He wouldn't do anything. He wouldn't bathe himself. He just stayed on the ground for seven days. But once the child was gone, he said, there's nothing else for me to do. He's not coming back. I'll go to him one day, but he's not coming back. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to shower and I'm going to eat. And the, the challenge with scripture sometimes is that we don't know the time span between verses, even subverses. It seems very, like, very quick because it says he got up and he ate and he gave that little, little word that people know that I'm not gonna, he's not going to come back, but I will go to him. And then he went to Bathsheba and then they, you know, they had relations and then she got pregnant again. And then all of a sudden we have a verse and a half later we have Solomon. That's quicker than God made it for Adam and Eve before the fall. Seems really quick, but there's a little, a couple of words in there that also can seem kind of quick. That after he got up and he ate and he showered, he says he went to Bathsheba and he comforted her. And we don't know how long that took. Because we know that that morning time must have lasted a, a long time. So give yourself the time. But when the spirit of God, the word of God that discerns when it's gone on too long. Know when it's time to shake off the dust and arise. And that's my prayer for everyone. Take your time. But when the Spirit of God says it's time to get up, may you get up. May you get up. There's a great verse also about King David. Um, it's actually just prior to when we meet David. Is the prophet Samuel was mourning King Saul. So King Saul fell. Into sin. He became demon possessed and evil. And it says that Samuel, the prophet Samuel, mourned Saul. But God went to Samuel and said, and this is where I got to paraphrase, but maybe I'll get it right again. Glory. Can I get a glory? I'm in the wrong place. How long are you going to mourn for Saul? This is the spirit of God. This is what God told him. How long are you going to mourn for Saul? Fill your horn with oil and go. Because I got something greater planned. This is God talking. This is not a human saying, why isn't he or she getting over it? Just get over it. That's the worst advice. But when the spirit of God says, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? And think about what that must have meant to Samuel, who was a prophet, who was the judge of Israel at that time. He heard from God correctly. He had a power encounter with Saul. He anointed Saul. He presented Saul in front of the nation. And then he sinned and fell. How embarrassing that must have been for Samuel. Anybody ever step out in faith, hear the word correctly, have a, a, a prophecy given to you or you hear the word or you hear the spirit of God talking to you. It came with signs, it came with wonders, it came with confirmation and it didn't turn out the way it planned. And you're like, Father, I thought I heard you right. I did everything that you said, but it didn't turn out. It didn't, what, what happened? Why did this relationship fail when you told me this person was the one? That's what Samuel dealt with, right? This is the one. Go anoint him. Okay, I did everything you said. He sins, he falls, he becomes evil. And his anointing gets pulled. How hard that must have been for Samuel. But at the, at the right time, the Spirit of God said, how long are you going to mourn for him? Go. Go. Fill your horn with oil. I got something greater. Maybe somebody here needs to hear that. How long are you going to mourn? Fill your horn with oil. And go. See, when a preacher says, somebody here needs to hear this, that's a preacher's way of sounding prophetic, but not being prophetic. Because if I was really prophetic, I would say, Brandon, you need to hear that. Or Carrie, you need to hear that. 
but I'm not being prophetic. So I'm saying somebody here needs to hear that. Glory. Can we give a glory hallelujah for, pre for, for preacher's tricks? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Father. <laughs> right? Come on, somebody. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, yeah, take your time in mourning. When God says it's time to arise, shake off the dust and arise. May you, may I do that. Because the enemy wants to keep us stuck somewhere. The enemy wants to keep us stuck. Do you know how to get over it? This is how you get over it. See, I would never tell you to just get over it. But I will encourage you to get over it. See, get over it is a bad advice. Get over it is bad advice. So I give you other advice. Get over it. Stop looking at me cross-eyed. I would never tell anybody, just get over it. But the Spirit of God might say, and is saying, always, get over it. Over it. I know I back you. This is the hurt. This is the pain, the struggle, the loss, the disappointment. Getting over it is trite. Getting over it is triumphant. Come on, somebody. And that's where God wants you to be. It may be hard to get over it. But I want to encourage you to get over it. Because that is the natural order of things. Sorry, no. It's the supernatural order of things. When God created man, he put us over nature. In the purest sense... Satan is a snake. In the purest sense, he's a snake. And in the purest sense, he can chomp at the heel, but we step on his head. We must be over it. Over the things of the world. Over the things of the flesh. Over the things. Because I tell you right now, Satan wants us at his level. And he will use your grief. Uh-oh. Uh when you take one syllable words and turn them into two, you're in a whole different level of spirit. That's why I like the Spanish word for spirit. It's three syllables. Espiritu. I like it. Satan wants to bring you to his level. And his level is the level of the dirt. So grieve. And God will protect you. But if he's telling you, see, the, what's the key word in shake off the dust and arise? The key word is arise. And if we stay in this place longer than the spirit of God wants, Satan has access to us because in the, in the, in the pure root sense of who he is, he's a serpent. And if we stay at his level too long, he will have access so arise. And I don't want to make it seem easy. Just like it's not easy to get over things. It's not easy to get over things. I don't want to minimize 
how hard that is sometimes, especially with addictions and things of the flesh, to be over it. But I can tell you that is the supernatural order of things. Nothing in this world should be over you. You are over it. Come on, somebody. But I don't want to minimize it. It's hard. I'm a firm believer that God puts his truth into nature. And he made a little thing called gravity, which makes it hard to go up. Ascending is hard. Going upward can be hard. There's a comedian that Susie and I like. He's also of blessed memory. His name is John Panette. Anybody hear of John Panette? It's like a hefty, heavy guy. He always poked fun at his own weight. But he talked in this one bit. It's pretty funny. I'll play with after service, after the spirit is, you know, when we're back to kind of normal stuff. I'll play it for you on YouTube or something. But it's a funny bit, you know. He's like, he talks about, like, I went to the gym. And, you know, they told me to do sit-ups. And I said, no, nah, I don't do ups. You know, at the gym, they want you to do ups, you know, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups. I don't do ups. I do downs. Lay down, sit down. It's a funny bit. But up is hard. Up is challenging. Susie and I learned that the hard way when we hiked in the Grand Canyon. When the first part of the hike is down, and you think you're doing really well, and you can keep going because it's so easy because it's down. And then all of a sudden, you realize, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got to get back up this thing. Where's my mule? It's hard. <laughs> up is hard. Up is hard. How do you get over an offense? When somebody insults you. Somebody disappoints you when somebody calls you something that you're not. You know, this culture that we're in right now is very easily offended. Everybody's very easily offended. It's just part of the culture. You, you millennials did all this. Don't blame the Gen Xers. You millennials did this. I hope the Gen Zers pull it back into something normal. And they're worse. <laughs> but there's such a spirit of offense, everything is offended. Even if you don't mean to be. You look at somebody, you know, and they translate it as you're looking at them the wrong way. It's a microaggression. But you don't even mean it. Like you were just kind of like, you just thought like, oh man, I missed my appointment. And then somebody over there is like, that person looked at me the wrong way. That was microaggression. I'm the victim. So then like the feelings of the person who's offended takes precedent over the actual truth of what happened. Shady looking person was walking down the street. <laughs> you know, I'm on the same side of the street. And I realize I'm on the wrong side of the street. I need to go to the building over there. So I walk to the other side of the street. And then the person is like, that person didn't want to be on the same side of the street as me. Microaggression. No, I just needed to go over there. But this is a very, this is a very culturally offended. This is a cult, uh, the culture is easily offended. But how do you get over an offense when somebody stabs you and wounds you? I tell you, it might be hard to get over, but God wants you to get over it. Get over it. This is where Adonai needs you to be with the things of the flesh underneath you. This is why I don't get to dabble too much into politics. And not that it's beneath me, you know, saying like, oh, it's beneath me is something that's belittling because it may not be beneath you. But I need the things of the world to be under me. And I know that if I enmesh myself too much in it, I'm back down with Satan over here, digging in the dirt, playing in the sandbox with Satan. I know it. And I know it. And I know it because that's how I feel when I'm in it. And I know how that feels. I got a feeling. A feeling deep inside, oh yeah, that's right. I know the feeling. So I can't be in that level of the politicking. I need to be up here and let the things of the world be down there.
what he said. So take your time when you're hurting. Take the time you need. But don't stay down there any longer than the Spirit of God wants you to be. And the encouragement I have for you is to be over it. Over it. Even if you're not over it. Get over it. This is how. Oh, this is quote worthy. This is how. Get your paper. This is how stumbling blocks become stepping stones. Come on. Come on, Lou. Hit it. Thank you, Father. And this is where God wants us to operate. This is why he says, seek the things of above. Fix your eyes on the things above. I lift my eyes to the hills. To the hills for whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. How do we put our eyes to the hills when we look upward? Being over is the supernatural thing. The spirit of God hovered over chaos. And said, let there be light. Yeshua walked on water. Be over it. Get over it. You'll bring you through it. If you get over it. These things can follow us around. Our hurts can follow us around. It's hard to get over things. God will do that. In his time. But I encourage you. To get over it. Let it be under you. Let it be beneath you. That's the supernatural order. We open this. With a thought about death. And about being with the Lord. When we die. Colossians 3. Says something else about being with the Lord. And I'm going to have to paraphrase it again. <laughs> Because it's three verse one. It says. I'm just going to read it. Where's the, Give me a Bible. Somebody give me a Bible. There it is. That is a thick Bible. Okay. It's one of those English ones. It goes the wrong direction. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Paula, what does what does Colossians come after? Glory, glory, glory. She doesn't know anybody. Philippians, what does Philippians come after? I got it. All right, I'm good. I'm good. Colossians, three verses one. Oh, it's got this King James thing going. If you then be risen with Messiah, seek those things which are above. Listen, where Messiah sits. You hear that? On the right hand of God. Let me read that again. If you be risen with Messiah, seek those things which are above where Messiah sits. Which means that we don't have to wait until we are on the other side of this thing to be seated with Messiah. We are where Messiah sits when we fix our eyes on things above, not below. That's how we sit in the place of Messiah, in high places. Thank you, Adonai. Bless the Lord. So, Father, I just lift up everyone, Lord God, who's dealing with a hurt and dealing with a wound or dealing with a loss or dealing with a death, Father. Father, I just be comfort over everyone here, Lord God. And there's no human that could put a time limit on this, Father. But I pray, Lord God, that if they have difficulty getting over it, I pray that you quicken them to know that it is their it is, they are, they are ordained, they are appointed spiritually to be over it. In the name of Yeshua, amen. And we don't have prayer after service. Our prayer team is not here today. So you know what I'm going to do? After we close the service, I'm going to leave this right here. And anybody who's struggling, just being a little too low, Operating a little too low in the realm that we're supposed to be above. 
if anybody's having trouble getting over it, you'll leave this here and just come before it like an altar in your own time. Get some help. Don't hurt yourself. And just stand upon it as a simple act of faith. That Father, help me to be above my hurts, the wound that I have from others. The prophecy of Yeshua said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemy your footstool. That's the supernatural pattern. It says in the Psalms that, I, that God lifts us up above our enemies. You know how to get over your enemies? Above. Thank you, Father. So I'll leave this here for you to just come on your own. Don't hurt yourself. Get some help. Just stand up on it in the, and just bring that before the Lord. Amen. Yeshua's name. Amen.